I welcome all the viewers to my channel. Let's have a discussion on trade in medieval Europe. I am Orani Saikya from the Postgraduate Department of History, Naugam College. Trade in medieval Europe was intricately related with the revival of towns. As we discussed in our earlier video, by the 11th century, towns grew both in number and size. Trade became more important with greater specialization. The Arab pirates dominated the seas until the 11th century. Then on, the Italian cities captured the pirate bases and reclaimed the seas for trade. The Crusades expanded trade routes to the east and Europe came to control the Mediterranean trade. Certain factors promoted trade in medieval Europe. After the Viking raids in the 8th and 9th centuries, new trade routes opened up. They stretched out across Russia and Eastern Europe to the Black Sea and the Middle East. Cities such as Venice, Genoa, Milan and Florence grew wealthy. They served as trading centers for goods from the Middle East and Asia. They controlled Mediterranean and Black Sea trade. Merchants from Italy and Flanders, that is the present day Belgium and the Netherlands, dealt directly with one another in the international trade fairs. From the mid of the 12th century, their commercial power was boosted by the foundation of the Hanseatic League. The Hanseatic League was a confederation of merchants and cities in Northern Europe working together for their mutual economic benefit. It was centered on the North German port of Lübeck. It included towns in the Baltic and the North Sea stretching from Russia to England. At the beginning, most trade was in luxury goods that only the wealthy could afford. People made everyday necessities for themselves. By the high Middle Ages, people were buying and selling more products, everyday goods like food, clothing and household items. Some towns grew wealthier because local people specialized in producing goods, such as woolen cloth, glass and silk. Towns in Flanders were known for their fine woolen cloth. Glassworks grew up in Venice. Silk was made into velvet in Italy. It was dyed deep red with Brazilut that grew in Java or Sri Lanka. It was then sold to a merchant in India or China. Wine was one of the major commodities traded over the whole of Europe. Northern European countries, which produced little wine, were eager to acquire large quantities of wine from the southerly areas of production. By the end of the 15th century, winemaking was established as a profitable activity. The authorities now levied taxes on the production and traffic in wine. Metalwork increased. Copper from the Central Europe was combined with tin from England to make bronze. Trade created new possibilities and better quality products, mining, whether metals, minerals, stone, or changed the environment. Diverse technological developments went on side by side. Trade routes that already had existed were used more frequently. Let's know about the trade routes in medieval Europe. The Mediterranean route joined the West with the Near East and the Byzantine Empire. The Atlantic and the Baltic routes joined the ports of the Iberian Peninsula with the Northern Europe. Luxury items such as silk and spices were imported. Fabrics, weapons and tools were exported. Wool, wine, leather, wood, wheat were transported through the Dutch ports. In a way, trade connected the world. As you see, Asian traders carried silk and spices to the Muslim traders. The Muslim traders took the silk and spices to the Italian merchants. The Italian merchants then spread the silk and spices in all over Europe. Long distance trade was carried out by larger ships with a greater capacity for goods. There were natural hazards involved in transport. From 1347 to 1352, the trade routes brought not only the products but the black date. With the growth of trade and commerce, 
merchants grew as a powerful and wealthy community of towns. They ran sizable businesses and looked for trading opportunities even far from home. Most of the towns had a market for transaction of food items and artisan products. A town used to organize merchant fairs. These fairs attracted merchants from all over Europe, the Middle East and beyond. Medieval trade would not have been possible without the guilds. The guilds were organizations that grouped people in the same business or trade in a single city. The guilds provided financial security to the members and served as craft associations. They protected the interest of the people doing a certain work and monitored the hours of work. They maintained the quality of their products and set prices of the commodities. They also handled complaints from the public. The guilds therefore punished members who had bad practices. Moreover, the guilds provided newcomers training and materials. There were two main kinds of guilds, merchant guilds and craft guilds. Merchant guilds dominated the business life of urban centers. Members of merchant guilds often sat on town councils or were elected mayor. All types of craftsmen had their own guilds from cloth makers to cobblers who worked on leather goods. From bakers to the stone masons who built the cathedrals. Weavers, spinners, woolmen, dyers, sculptors, carpenters, artists had their respective guilds. Members of a guild paid dues to their organization for the construction of guild halls and for guild fairs. Guilds took care of members and their families who were sick and unable to work. Starting around the age of 12, a boy and sometimes a girl became an apprentice. An apprentice's parents signed an agreement with a master of a trade. The master agreed to shelter, feed and train the apprentice. In some cases, the parents paid the master a sum of money. At the end of seven years, apprentices had to prove to the guild that they had mastered their trade. Medieval Europe now witnessed market economy and banks. By the end of the 12th century, goods were regularly exchanged between Flanders and Italy. The demand for gold and silver coins arose. The growth of trade replaced a barter system with money. Trading companies were formed to menace the exchange and sale of goods. Banking firms were established, leading to the rise of commercial capitalism. Some towns built their wealth on banking industry that grew up to help the people trade more easily. Insurance activities also emerged. The word bank derives from the Italian word for the tables at which the bankers sat in the marketplace. Banking networks tended to be based in northern Italian cities. In the 13th century, indigenous Italian banking houses grew up with their agencies as far afield as London and Paris. The expansion of trade drew more and more rural communities into the market economy and links between countryside and towns grew stronger. Manors lost a large measure of their self-sufficiency as they participated more in money economy. This development stimulated the expansion of towns, merchant communities and of course coinage. Medieval towns commonly had sizable Jewish communities. In Christian Europe, they often faced deep prejudice. One opportunity that was open to the Jews was to become bankers and moneylenders. This work was generally forbidden to Christians because the church taught that charging money for loans was sinful. At first, banking was in the hands of Jewish moneylenders who used their links with Jewish communities throughout Europe and the Middle East to handle the money needed for international trade. In this way, Jewish bankers and moneylenders provided an essential service to the medieval European economy. Along with them, the Italian bankers of medieval Europe pioneered financial institutions 
vital to the rise of modern global commerce. Limited liability companies, stock and shares, bill of exchange and letters of credit all developed at this time. All over Western Europe, merchants became increasingly wealthy and politically powerful. Serfdom began to die out. Meanwhile, the countryside languished in levels of population, if not in prosperity. Thank you so much viewers.